Okay, this video is going to be classified as a tree decisions video. I have a series of videos that I talk about why we prune trees and what we're doing and the reasoning behind making the cuts. So what we've got is a fairly large Platinus racemosa uh, called a sycamore tree in the States. Um, if you're over in the UK, uh, you call this a plane tree. In the UK, you call a sycamore tree some kind of a maple. Uh, I think we should straighten this out, but this is still referred to over here as a sycamore. All right, I want to interject something here. The word sycamore. In the UK, if you say sycamore, you're referring to a type of maple. Over here, when we say sycamore, we're talking about the London Plain, or in this case, a California native, the Platinus racemosa. The uh, London Plain is called the Platinus acerfolia. Now, I don't know where the confusion came from, but I believe strongly that those of you who work with the plane tree know that that stuff that's under the leaves gets in your throat, makes your eyes hurt, and makes you sick a more. A lot sicker when you work on a plane tree. So let's stick with the name sycamore for the plane tree. That's what I'm going to call it. So it is what it is. I'm over in the States. Sorry, guys, over in England. But sycamore is a plane tree. This tree has been pruned repeatedly over its entire life. And it's important to recognize that this tree predates the housing development. There is an old creek nearby, and this is uh, one of the native California trees. So it's likely to be 80 to 100 years old. But because there are two houses underneath it, the neighbor's house and this house, uh, as long as people have lived there, they've been tipping this tree back because they didn't want it to get too big. So what I'm talking about today is when a tree is consistently tipped back, the resulting new growth often leads to an excessive amount of end weight. And that end weight can lead to an excessive amount of the seed pods, which are quite heavy on this tree, and failures can happen. Branches can break as a result of there being too many new tip branches that result from having been pruned so many times. I know that sounds kind of weird, but if you just let these branches grow naturally, if this tree had never been pruned before, or maybe just the dead branches taken out of it, it wouldn't require much pruning at all. But because of the way that it's been pruned, it has too many tips that, that develop on it. You can see on those branches right there, they're like big brooms of branches. Instead of being a long lacy branch, you, there, there's a good example. You can see where it was cut back before. And um, we've, we've got to lighten it up. We've got to get some of that weight out of there. So this becomes a, a problem for the owner of the tree because now you have to prune the tree every few years. Uh, some people do it every year. I think that's a bit excessive. Um, you can get away with doing it about every three, maybe four years. But if you let it go too long, then you'll have branches breaking. So I'm up on the roof and Kaylin is uh, getting out on this long branch here. Most of the work we did was with uh, hand saws and pull saws. There were a few uh, chainsaw cuts, but I'm up on the roof because everything that was coming down, we had to rope down onto um, the roof. And you can see they've got those plastic nettings up there that is a reference for what the, the new structure is going to look like. So I told them we had to take those down because we'd snag them all. There's the base of the tree. You can see it's it's fairly large. Uh, I guess the tree to be um, about 100 feet tall. Uh, Kalen's rope was a 150 footer and it just barely hit the ground. All right, I'm going to give a plug out here to treestuff.com. Uh, this is called the Bonner Double Bag and they gifted this to me and I really like it. Uh, I'm not getting anything for saying this, but uh, except they did give me the bag. Um, the fact that it holds two throw balls is really good because throw balls frequently get hung up in the tree and to have a secondary one as a backup is really important and it, it means you can flack it out and lay it all out and there's what it looks like all closed up. Uh, I don't even know what they sell for but uh, if you use throw balls uh, I highly recommend this little tool here. Uh, it's taken me a while to 
realize the value of it. There's a couple of other tree stuff tools there. They gifted me this rope bag, very good. They also gifted me this uh, launcher here, throw ball launcher. And we use it, but not as often as I thought we'd use it because oftentimes I'll over pump it and I shoot that throw ball so high that it, it uh, is a problem. So it's not the problem with the tool, it's the problem with me. I haven't really learned it. I think it needs some kind of a gauge that you can put pressure on it and know exactly how much you've got in there. Uh, anyway, I can talk further about that later. Uh, here's another tool that we used. Um, we didn't use it initially. We got the ladder up there and Kalen climbed up and it's lunchtime and I, I, we had the double rope down so he decided to uh, use the foot ascenders and the double jumar to go back up. Uh, it's not too hard. I mean, you, you know, somebody does have to hold the rope down to get started. You know, so Jorge's on the ground stepping on the rope. Um, it's uh, it, it's a learning curve, but it's it's a good way to get back up into the tree. Or, you know, we could have gotten up there initially from it. But this tree does have a lot of branches, so it wasn't too, too hard to climb. There he goes. He's kind of changing his technique there. It's two feet up. And kind of almost the inchworm technique works a little bit better than trying to go back and forth because the, the Jumar holds tight on both of the ropes. Now, I don't do... Uh, single rope technique. Uh, I don't want to even talk about it. A lot of guys out there swear by it, but I'm pretty old school. We still do. Um, it's a single rope, but it's doubled over, so it's referred to as double rope, which doesn't make any sense to me because I've been using my single rope forever, and it's always been a single rope doubled over. So at this point, uh, we got all the roping done over the roof, and I decided to get up there with him and it's very time consuming going out each of these branches so we set both ropes way up high um, a lot of it was done with a pole saw he was able to, to hand it over to me and i was going out to, on the ends of a lot of these branches and lightening them up there was uh, one very long branch that i had to get out to I, I don't know if i show it in here maybe i'll show it later on but it was over the neighbor's pool and that was hard because it was at the very top of the tree but it was on the outside so i wasn't able to have my rope above me i was uh, where i was tied in it went straight out so that was kind of awkward and here's what the tree looks like uh finished you can see it doesn't look like we took very much out of it but we lightened up every tip all the way around there we go that's what i was pointing to where i had to take that branch off well thanks for watching and please leave a comment and hit the like button